is treadmill running easier than outdoor running? Well, of course, it would depend on where you run outdoors, the speed you run at, and the gradient of the treadmill. But what if you made both the treadmill flat and the outdoor condition flat, which would be easier? In 1996, Jones and Doust sought to investigate whether treadmill and outdoor running were as physically demanding as one another. They recruited nine male runners with an average VO2 max of 65.1 millilitres per kilogram per minute, which is pretty damn good. And they were asked to run for six minutes at six different velocities with six minutes of recovery. And they repeated this on a treadmill at 0% again at 1%, 2% and 3%. And they also did it outdoors so you can make your comparisons. Uh, the outdoor condition was done on a seafront promenade and they used an out and back course and the participants or the runners were paced using a cycler that was two meters by their side. The cyclists did a pretty good job because all speeds using the analysis were within minus 0.06 meters per second. The primary outcome variable was VO2, which means volume of oxygen, which we use to express oxygen consumption, which is an estimate of energy expenditure, predominantly from aerobic metabolism. And because this is quite an old study, they used Douglas bags, which are old school. Essentially, it's a big bag, and then you connect it to a tube, which is connected to someone's face so they can collect expired air. And using some Mathematica, you can determine the volume of oxygen consumed by the individual and the amount of carbon dioxide expired by the individual. And to make sure other variables weren't interfering with the primary outcome variable, in other words, oxygen consumption, they controlled for confounding variables. Strenuous training was <laughs> in the 24 hours preceding each test. Oh jeez. What did they find? What did they find? What did they... Oh, that's a nice looking table over there. Oh, that's, that's a nice looking graph. Basically, the 1% treadmill gradient best reflected the oxygen cost for the level road. The, the, the seafront promenade level road thingy. As you can see, the 1% the gradient almost... Well, it pretty much does overlap. Uh, with the level road compared to the 0%, 2% and 3%, which are a little bit further away from the level road. Which is why they concluded that you should set the treadmill at a gradient of 1% if you want to simulate the outdoor cost of running. And boy, did people do this. Yeah, you get the idea. But, you think it ends here. Well, well, well. You are mistaken. Turns out depending on which treadmill you exercise on can change the rate of oxygen consumption, which literally means some treadmills are easier to exercise on at a given speed and gradient than other treadmills. Now that's not useful given the number of treadmills there are out there. I mean, look at this graph, the Cosmos and the Quinton are two different treadmills. But everyone exercising on the Quinton demonstrated significantly higher oxygen consumption compared to the Cosmos, meaning that the Quinton is harder to exercise on than the Cosmos at a given speed. Then how can we be sure that Jones and Doust can be applied to any treadmill, given that they used one of the softest treadmills in the world as it was marketed that way? The authors even said that the optimal gradient that should be matching the outdoor cost of running needs to be determined independently for each treadmill should this be a requirement for the user. That's... How, how are we going to do that? Even in the first ever systematic review and meta-analysis concerning physiological perceptual and performance measurements between treadmill and overground running found so much variation within the results compared to a 0% and 1% treadmill gradient which further confirms the notion that a 1% treadmill gradient may not best reflect the overground cost of running when running indoors on a treadmill. So, I mean, you want to get something out of this video that's useful, but I mean, there's no real definitive answer at the moment because we originally thought that the 1% treadmill gradient was the gradient to use, but now Smith's paper has come out in 2017, we simply don't know because Depending on the treadmill, things start to vary considerably. 
which has put a lot of ambiguity into whether Jones and Dow's finding can be applied across many conditions. So I hope you leave this video feeling a little bit more educated on a very specific topic and as always stay curious. I sound like Vsauce. If you want to find the papers I used for this short review I'll put them in the description and if you have any video suggestions put them in the comments down below. Make sure to like and subscribe because apparently that does some good stuff. Um, so get that going and I guess I'll see you around when I have enough time to make another little video. Bye.